I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we go back to our Python on Snowflake playlist, and we're going to take a look at how to run some code on Snowflake as opposed to our local machine. Now, as many of you know, uh, we've done a lot of work with the Snowflake connector, and we've run all kinds of Python on our local machine, retrieving data using the connector and things like that. Uh, but sometimes we want to run code in Snowflake, and we're going to use Snowpark for that today, and we're going to sort of extend our exploration into Snowpark, and we're going to run some UDF, or User Defined Functions, uh, in Python on Snowflake. Let's get to it. Interested in using the files created in this video? Make sure to check out my downloads page. The link is in the description. Okay guys, so this is a pretty cool uh, episode today, pretty fun. We're gonna run some code in Snowflake. We're gonna run uh, some Python in Snowflake. And uh, this will be our first adventure in doing that. We've been using the connector up to this time, running it locally on our own machines. And uh, we're gonna follow this episode up with uh, an episode on how to do uh, store procedures uh, with Python. And uh, that's also gonna be a lot of fun. So uh, today we're gonna get started. We're gonna, uh, from our snowflake.snowpark uh, library, we're gonna import session. And we'll uh, also, we'll grab uh, functions, because uh, functions, uh, is that's gonna give us our UDF. Um, and so that's our user defined function uh, from Snowpark. And we'll also grab, uh, we're gonna get uh, uh, Snowpark, we're gonna use types and we're gonna use string uh, in this one. Now you can also get uh, integer type and some other types. Uh, you're gonna need those because as we use user defined functions, uh, we can't use the loose typing like we use in Python uh, at the sort of entryway to using Python, we have to specify, you know, we've got a string going in or an integer going in, and it's going to give us back out a string or an integer, and we have to make sure um, that we specify that when we do our functions. And then I'll set up my session variable, I'll give some feedback to the user saying connecting, and then I'm going to set up my connection parameters here, uh, similar to how we did in our previous uh, episodes uh, related to Snowpark. Uh, we're using um, our account, our user, and our password. Our, we're gonna specify the warehouse and some other things. And I've, I've actually loaded these variables um, up above the import statements, uh, but you would put in your own uh, credentials here and, uh, and we can specify the warehouse and then we'll specify the database and the schema. And that's going to allow us to connect to Snowflake and go exactly where we want to go to where we want to do our work. Um, and so that we don't really have to uh, specify that stuff once we're in Snowflake. Um, you know, we can do that using the use statements, uh, but today we're just going to connect right up and go right into our project schema in our project database there and that's got some project tables that we can use and I will note uh, that we are going to cover basic UDFs today uh, we're going to um, get some UDFs working uh, but there's also some other um, aspects to it that you should be aware of like some dependencies and things like that how to use files from your staging and all of that kind of stuff which we'll probably cover in, in an upcoming episode. Uh, but today we just want to demonstrate, our goal is to get uh, an anonymous UDF working uh, using a Lambda and also get a named UDF working. And we're gonna, we're gonna save that one. So I've created my try block here and I'm gonna uh, put in the exception and finally blocks in after here. Uh, but just to get us tested and started here, I'm going to um, create my session using session.builder.configs. I'll put in my parameters and I'll use create there. And, uh, and then I'm going to uh, set my, uh, my staff data frame equal to session.table staff. Now, 
the data frames, uh, if you want to check my previous episode, just look up above here and the card should appear. Uh, if you want to click on that to see how the table works and, and the data frames inside of Snowpark, because um, we covered that in the last episode. Um, so I'm going to load that df underscore staff uh, with uh, session.table and then I'm naming the staff table from my project schema and uh, I'm going to use dfstaff.show uh, which is a method that will you know, sort of spit out uh, what's in that table. Now you'll see I'm creating my exception block here. I'm going to print off that exception if, it, if we get an error and then I'm going to close the session regardless of what happens. I want to make sure that session gets closed um, so there's my exception block, um, my accept block, and my finally. And so if we do have a session, it's going to close it. And, uh, and then uh, we'll print done at the very end um, after everything has sort of uh, transpired. So from there, I can just hit F5. I just want to see if I'm getting anything here. And it looks like I did. So we've got this little table uh, with some last names with Smith, Duncan, and Schmidt, and got a date of birth in there and some first names and IDs and it's a very simple table um, but it's a perfect kind of table for us to test out our um, UDF functions and so we can go ahead and do that now and so I'll go ahead and I'll uh, comment out that uh, DF underscore staff there and uh, we're gonna load up a variable here um, I'll just call it name code and we'll put our UDF um, function there. So we're going to use that UDF. Uh, that is from our import statement above there and uh, we're going to make a lambda uh, function, a very simple function. We'll pass in the last name and uh, let's make a code here actually. We'll make a, a last name code. Uh, we'll take everything but the lot but the first three characters and we'll you know concatenate that with the last three characters and uh, and let's use that for for a function instead I guess I did call the variable name code but we'll we'll use this for now I'll just use that and we're gonna put our return type in now this is uh, something that the UDF is uh, very important to use with it so we're going to use that string type that we mentioned up above there um, the return type equals string type and then the input types uh, we're also going to specify as string type now you can use you know integer types as I mentioned before um, just make sure that you include those when you set your lambda function here and so um, that's going to complete that that uh, UDF and uh, that'll load that into that variable called full name and we'll we'll now we'll sort of use that and we'll load up df underscore names and we'll say df dot staff dot select and we'll say a last name we'll take that field and we'll take our uh, first name uh, as well and we'll use that name code variable which represents our UDF function and we'll put in last name as our argument and we're going to get our 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 code our custom code into the name code uh, field there and uh, and then we'll collect that and uh, so once we've done that we can uh, sort of loop through that and just output what we get it's a little bit less verbose than just printing it off. And so I've got four row in DF names. I'll use, uh, I'll just say print row. And that should give us an idea of what's happening there. And uh, so I'll hit F5 there and let's see what we get. Uh, so we've got our original table up above there, which I uncommented for us to compare and uh, we've got our last name first name and then we've got this big sort of project database dot project schema dot snowpark function blah 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 uh, last name equals and there's our, our our full name code that we created um, 
uh, and we've got Duff, Mac, and Per slash Coo, and uh, Sun dot Will, or Sun slash Will, and et cetera, et cetera. And so uh, one way that we can make this a little bit uh, easier to read is to add a name and make it so that it, it is not an anonymous function. It is a named function. And we can do that by adding the name into our arguments uh, when we create that UDF. And we'll call this one uh, name code. And that will make it no longer an anonymous UDF. Um, it will make it a named UDF. So now we can we can actually call that name code uh, UDF uh, every time that we use it in our code or in our select statements. And now you can see the field name has name underscore code on it, and uh, and it gives the code just like we wanted to see. Okay, so that's how we can create a Lambda function uh, in Snowpark. But uh, in the next section here, what we're going to do is we're going to create uh, a full function, a full Python function, as opposed to just a Lambda function. And so in order to do that, we're going to use, we'll use the, the at sign here, and we're going to say at UDF, and then we'll, we'll um, give this function a name we'll call it we'll call this one alt code I guess and that it'll be the alternate code for our uh, fictional scenario here and I'll say uh, replace equals true so we're going to replace that function uh, if it is there and uh, that's sort of like all you really need to put in there um, there are some more arguments that we're going to add to this after or at least we'll add at least one more argument and that will be the is permanent argument, uh, which will actually save this function so that we can use it um, in our uh, Snowpark environment uh, without defining it every time. So right after we do our UDF statement there, what we're going to do is we're going to define our, our uh, function in Python just like we normally would. Uh, but we are going to set our input and output parameter types. Uh, or argument types. Uh, so we're going to say last colon and then we're going to say string and then we're going to say that outputs a string um, when the function completes. And so let's go ahead and create sort of a random uh, function here. All I'm going to do is I'm going to say our alt code is equal to the last name and the number of A's that are in the name uh, or something like that. Uh, I think there's actually only a few names in here that have A, so I guess we'll find that out now. And I'll use a loop because you could do loops and all kinds of things in your function, and it can really be as complex as you need it to be. I'm just going to return the simple last name with an underscore and then the number of A's in the string. And then uh, let's go ahead and call that. So uh, I'll use a, a df underscore staff dot select here and I'll just load that into a data frame called df underscore alt and I'll just pull up the last name and then the alt code for the last name and then we'll we'll use a collect on that and that's gonna collect the data uh, from that data frame and then we can go ahead and we can do our uh, row uh, printing here because we only have a few rows and that'll give us an idea of sort of what we're looking at. So now when I hit F5, you can see the first set of codes is created um, as well as the second set of codes. And the second, the alt codes, the second code is, is got the name with the underscore and the number of A's in the last name. And that's exactly what we want to see there. And as I mentioned before, you can actually go to your function and you can make it permanent by saying is permanent equals true and then you don't have to define it every time. Want to see more content like this? Make sure to check out my Patreon. The link is in the description.